Well, let's bring in our studio guests this evening, journalist and author Rachel Shabby and Natasha Hausdorff, a barrister and legal uh, director at the UK Lawyers for Israel Charitable Trust. Thank you both for joining us. And we have so much to discuss uh, tonight. But Natasha, I just want to uh, begin by sort of talking about the situation in Ukraine. The reality is that the Ukrainians are now outnumbered and they are in desperate need of money, uh, weapons and Ukrainians. And it's a situation I don't think we can allow to continue. Um, it's now two years in. Uh, the fact of the matter is uh, you cannot win a war in the middle and the West shouldn't be in a position uh, where it is allowing Russia to remain undefeated in Ukraine. There is a responsibility on the West uh, and the only way to finish this war is uh, for Russia to understand that it cannot win in Ukraine. And that responsibility, as I say, rests uh, with the West. Also, as we've been hearing on arms supply, uh, the level of production around the world uh, is uh, unsupportable and unforgivably low in these circumstances. It stems clearly from an assumption that uh, evil no longer exists. Uh, and two years into this, there's certainly a responsibility on Western powers to step up arms production, to support Ukraine, to be innov innovative, as we've been hearing, uh, and to take the threat from Russia uh, more seriously because, I mean, this is ancient proverb, right? show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Russia and uh, its uh, supply from Iran, um, that is something that needs to be taken extremely seriously. In the same way, of course, um, Ukraine must defeat Russia, Israel must defeat Hamas. These are not wars that can be won in the middle. And uh, other than that, we're just going to see a continuation uh, in both arenas. I mean, Rachel, the fact is that Russia today is very confident when we hear what they have to say. I spoke to the Russian ambassador a couple of weeks ago. Their whole tone has changed. It's become very, very confident. They're bank banking on the fact that the willpower of the West will break. Absolutely, yeah, they're playing a long game and they can see the Ukrainians somewhat in retreat and potentially not really able to regroup for a few months. I think there are a few other factors here. Obviously, um, Israel-Palestine and the war on Gaza is a drain on international focus funding and resources, and it's weird to hear. I mean, the Palestinians are the Ukrainians in this equation and not the other way around. Uh, no matter, I think one of the big issues, and it's something that you have been covering at Sky, is the degree to which uh, the West still is financially uh, in some way intertwined um, and facilitating Russia. So when we look at things like the report that you covered so well around, you know, the, the degree of components for weaponry. I mean, the mind boggles. Mind blowing. And then, you know, the, 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 the fact that European countries are still, you know, 40% dependent on oil and gas supplies from Russia. The fact that Russian oligarchs use the UK or the London more specifically as a laundromat for um, finances. All of these things can and have not been taken action for. And I suspect the reason is purely financial. So at some stage, you know, there has to be some decision made of what exactly the West's priorities are. Is it financial gain or is it actually uh, helping Ukraine in this situation? Well, we are going to move to the Middle East uh, after the break, so do stay with us. Well, let's bring in our panel, Rachel and Natasha. Natasha, I'll come to you first. I mean, journalists should be given access. It's the whole point of it is that we bear witness and see what's going on so we can report for ourselves. We've just heard confirmation in that interview that journalists have had levels of access. We've seen Jeremy with Bowen reporting. IDF. Yes, we've seen Jeremy Bowen reporting embedded with the IDF, uh, other journalists. Um, clearly, the issue is a security situation. Israel suffered uh, two fatalities only this morning amongst the soldiers that were operating in the north of Gaza, um, which is, you know, we were told had been cleared of Hamas, of course, um, long before that. So I think it's important not to underestimate the intense challenges that Israel's facing, unprecedented challenges, we're told by military experts, in terms of the levels of urban armed conflict and the way that Hamas has spent the last 16 years embedding itself in civilian infrastructure. I mean, that's clearly not a safe environment for any journalist to be but reporting. As a journalist, I know that embeds, I've done them with the Americans, I've done them with the Afghan forces, with the Iraqi forces. 
your control to, to a level. And, mm. and I think that's part of the point of what journalists are trying to say. And the critical issue here, and I absolutely agree with this element of it, what we have had from the Palestinian journalists on the ground so far, unfortunately, is parroting Hamas propaganda. Um, nowhere is that more uh, apparent than in the casualty figures that are constantly being put out. At least we've had latterly clarification that they come from the Hamas-controlled Palestinian Ministry of well, Health. The, the, the US president actually made a point and, and said just last week that 28,000 people were killed. That was the US president. Well, the State Department I think said that as well. I think that's extremely problematic when those numbers are reliant only, and they're not indiv uh, independently verified, reliant on uh, hamas control. Well, I think that the US president wouldn't be parroting well, the... Um, but please, Rachel, one, if you wanted to jump in. I think in. that's just a yeah. willful misunderstanding of how journalism works, frankly. And I think this is a perfect sweet spot for the Israeli army. They, I remember they first did this uh, in the 2008 war on Gaza when I was based in the region and they banned all journalists apart from the ones that were already there. Um, the Palestinian journalists in Gaza, as you and your colleague Alex Crawford described, are doing an incredible job... Um, trying to get the truth out to the world while their own families and sometimes their colleagues are being killed. Um, is... Does the IDF have a point, though, it's a security issue? No, that's not their decision to make. That's your decision to make. That's your risk and your organisation's risk. That's your decision. What Israel wants is to carry out these operations in the dark, number one, and number two, facilitate the kind of nonsense that Natasha is coming out with, which is... Oh, we can't possibly verify any of this. Well, let's we drill down know. on those casualty let's figures. Let's have a look at those casualty okay. figures. Just let's... give me yelled at. Okay. I've, sorry, I've just been accused ahead. of speaking nonsense. Those figures that even Biden has now been re repeating utterly unverified, even if we look at the... You 20... would think the Americans would well, get their me. intelligence May I? There, there are yep, three points to draw out here. The first point is uh, the inflation that we have seen. And there are there is independent analysis on the basis of open source to uh, to, to go into that. Um, if I use one example on the 17th of October, the um, al Akhli hospital strike that uh, the international media was accusing Israel of having conducted, well, that has been utterly debunked. It was a Palestinian Islamic Jihad rocket that fell in the car park. But that 500... Uh, casualty jump on the 17th of October has never been revised. It's just one example. So the veracity of those figures is impossible to determine at this stage. But there are other two, two critical issues of missing information. The first one is who are these people that they say are making up these casualty figures? Because Hamas does not distinguish between combatants and civilians. The what IDF know, has clearly what stated... What we know is that there are a lot of children... Well... The Americans, the UK... Yes. Israel's staunchest allies are now saying... Too many civilians are being killed. Let's just clarify. Israel has said, and it has verified this, it knows that it has killed uh, nearly 12,000 terrorists. That is not accounted for in the Hamas figures. And the other thing that is missing is how these people died. Because we so know that Hamas... The, sorry, I'm going to just bring in Rachel. Sorry, go ahead. This is a willful misunderstanding of how journalism and verification and sourcing works. When we take figures from the Gaza Health Ministry, it is because those figures have checked out in the past. They checked out in 2008, they checked out in 2014, they checked out in 2012. The Gaza Health Ministry is the most, uh, the best able to get those figures from the hospitals, from the morgues. When those figures were disputed months ago, it very diligently... The US president disputed them. He disputed them. They wrote out a list, 212 pages, names, ID numbers, which Israel has because Israel controls the registry. We use those sources for the same reason that we use any other source. The because final they... element of missing Hang information on, I haven't finished here yet. is... Haven't finished. Well, neither had sorry, I. Sorry. I had Forgive not me. finished. The final element you of missing going information to more... here... You're going to throw I'm more sorry. shade and nonsense. The final nonsense. element of missing information here is how these people have died. We know that Hamas has been shooting its own civilians. We know that they have been bombing fleeing civilians. And we know Who that Hamas and Gaza? Palestinian Islamic Jihad rockets fired towards Israel are falling short in the Gaza Strip. I'm just going to... Uh, go ahead. We use, those, we use those sources because we use sources that check out. The Gaza Health Ministry, along with other sources that we use from Gaza, have consistently checked out. That's how basic journalism works. I'm sorry that you keep throwing shade on that. It's really insulting. Number two, who is dropping the bombs on Gaza? Which country, which government 
has dropped in the first few months of the war the equivalent of three nuclear bombs well, if on I Gaza. May respond to that no, directly. you may not because I have not finished. Sorry, yeah, we've, we we've literally talking, got thirty we are seconds. I'll just about Palestinian sorry, women and children, tens and thousands of women and, and children we who are being killed, ahead, maimed orphaned, terrorised and tortured. And that is happening because is Israeli army who is bombs responsible? are, I'll just are obliterating you. houses and every sign of infrastructure in Gaza. You cannot blame anyone else for that. Any international Go lawyer ahead. or military expert worth their salt will be confirming that throughout every previous conflict, Israel has not only complied with the laws of armed conflict on proportionality, on distinction, on necessity and on precision targeting and precaution against civilian casualties, but has gone way above and there is no reason to suggest that this time this, is... in this particular instance they have? If we look at the figures for other armed conflicts, uh, the average global figure that the United Nations puts out for urban armed conflicts is a di very disturbing nine civilians to every one combatant killed. Well, the Israeli figures check out at more or less one to one now, which is unprecedented in the history of urban conflict and it is testament well, to the targeted strikes that Israel is conducting. But the final happens, missing piece of information... Uh, I'm the so sorry. Israeli witnesses never, themselves but I have never, admitted that they are not that they have changed the laws of targeting. I have no, you have Israeli sources I still telling Israeli had the opportunity newspapers to finish that the they raise point. the number of permissible Excellent. civilian deaths. Wait, wait, wait. That's Israeli sources saying that. Forgive me. Okay. The final Make element of final missing point, information is the how break. the civilians have died. Because whereas Israel strikes are precise and targeted, the Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad rockets that fall short in the Gaza Strip kill Palestinians okay. indiscriminately. I'm, I'm going to have to actually we... go to the ad break, but I, I will come back. We will keep you here. This is The World with me, Yalda Hikmet.